I'm going to bring you along for what I am doing today and basically show you how I'm going to make this wonderful, nutritious beef bone broth. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the channel. So as you can probably tell, um, it's early and it's a little bit rainy outside and the dogs are eating breakfast. I've got some kitchen mayhem going on here in the background that needs to be cleaned up. But while it is raining, I'm going to take the opportunity and make some bone broth because even though I can't be out in the garden, there are still other things inside that need tending to, if I am completely honest, that I just sometimes kind of put on the back burner this time of the year due to the fact that there's a lot going on in the garden. So I'm going to bring you along for what I am doing today and basically show you how I'm going to make this wonderful, nutritious beef bone broth. It's been one of my favorite things to have on hand through the last seven months of doing a dietary healing journey. And I wanted to bring it to you so that you can try it at home because it's really not as hard as you may think it is. Also, I will be putting a video up here on making chicken bone broth because there's more than one way to make these bone broths. One way, of course, is doing it how I'm going to show you today, which is in the crock pot. But this other video that I have here is going to be showing you how I do it in a stock pot on the back burner of a stove. So you can do it either way. If you don't have a crock pot, don't worry about it. Go on ahead and use your stock pot and just put it on the back burner on low for 24 to 36 hours and you'll still develop a wonderfully nutritious bone broth. So there's lots of options and different ways of doing this. So don't worry about maybe not having certain equipment if you don't have it. Also, you could use a pressure cooker, which would accelerate the process and make it even faster than a crock pot. So if that's what you have instead of a crock pot, don't be afraid to jump in and use that either. Let's go on ahead and get into the bulk of the video here. Okay guys, so to our crock pot here, what I have in here are obviously I have some beef marrow bones and then I also have an oxtail piece in here as well. I have also added a bit of onion from the garden, some rosemary from the garden, three bay leaves, and then I have done a palmful of salt and a palmful of black pepper. Now, I know that there are some in the carnivore community that do not add herbs at all to their stock. So if this is you and you are not adding herbs, don't worry about adding those in there. I personally have not had any issue with adding herbs and I enjoy the flavor and diversity that the herbs will give to my meat and my stocks. So I do go ahead and use them. Now to all of this, what we're going to do is we are going to add some distilled water and just fill up our crock pot here. like so. Now I'm going to put my crock pot on here on high for 10 hours. And let it go. Okay, so when it comes to distilled water, and this may be a question that you're going to have as to why I use distilled water, I personally use distilled water because it is the purest way for me to get water into my body. Now, that being said, I know that there's a lot of uh, people who are using things like the Berkey filters and why am I not using that? Well, I have good reason for not using it. It just, it doesn't filter everything out. And one of the major things it doesn't filter out is Grazon, which happens to be one of the worst things that is in our water for us, especially for me on a neurologic level as a patient who is already 
having issues that way, I don't need that going into my body. Also, Macy back there in the chair, she has head issues with bladder stones, so oxalates are an issue as well as excess minerals. So distilled water is the way that we have gone. If you would like me to go a little bit more in depth on that and the research that I did, I'd be happy to do that. Just give me a comment down below if you are interested in that kind of a video and I will be more than willing to share with you what I found after doing some personal research. And honestly, the water distiller is a lot cheaper than the Berkey filter. So yeah, that also played a very major role. Plus, uh, doing things like this, I can get all of my mineral content back into my body without having to worry about doing supplements or anything along those lines. So I will see you back later this evening, in fact, to check on the state of our stock here, and we'll give it a taste test and see what we think of the flavor. Okay guys, so it's later in the evening and this bad boy has been working for 10 hours now. So it is time for us to give it a taste and make sure that we've got enough salt in there, number one. And then just make sure that pepper is good as far as the other seasonings. If you wanted to add anything extra, you could at this stage even. And also for preserving, there's a few different options. Number one, and this is a lot of fun, especially if you maybe only have a couple people in your house or you're by yourself, is to freeze the bone broth or the stock into ice cube form. Yeah, so basically what it is is once you freeze them into the ice cubes, you can just literally pop out one of those ice cubes and use it in a skillet to help season any meat or vegetables that you are cooking. You can do a really quick saute method with it. It's really good, especially if you do stir fry and use it that way. Now, another method would be to pressure can it. That would allow it to be shelf stable so that you wouldn't have to do any type of refrigeration. Obviously, you can just put this into a container and put it in the refrigerator for three to five days. They say not to do it any longer than that in the refrigerator just to prevent, you know, <clears throat> foodborne illnesses and all of that jazz. But um, then there is also the freezer method. So freezer method, you just have a container that you label as your beef or chicken or lamb stock, whatever you've got going on, and you stick it into the freezer as is or into small containers that are maybe more user friendly for you based upon your living situation, your family size, and or how you cook. But let's go on ahead now that I've given you all of your options here. Let's give it a taste and see how it turned out. Okay, now depending on you, you can go on ahead and remove the fat layer that's on top. I don't take out the fat, um, especially being carnivore. That's really my um, fuel source, I guess you could say. So instead of carbs being the long-term fuel source, the fat takes the place and fat is fabulous. Okay, let's try it. Mm. Good. Needs a little bit more salt, but other than that, it's spot on. It's nice and tasty. Mm. I'm going to be enjoying that this week. All right, guys. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to let this batch finish cooling down. Or I will go on ahead and I will add in, of course, a little bit more salt. Probably about a teaspoon is all it needs. But once I do that, I need to get it completely cool because I'm going to be freezing it. As I mentioned before, there are several different options for you to, you know, go on ahead and do as far as um, preserving it goes, but that's really all there is to it. It's super simple and especially in a crock pot, can't go wrong, okay? 
So guys, as always, keep it simple, natural, and essential. We'll see you on the next video. And don't forget, if you are interested in learning more about making bone broth, go on ahead and watch this video here at the end because you'll learn some extra tips and tricks and get to see what I do on the stovetop with bone broth instead of crock pot style. All right, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Bye.